Hello and welcome back to yet another live session here, live from Graph UK HQ. And I'm once again joined by David, three weeks in a row. It's, it's getting quite the occasion. It's a, it is. It's a highlight of the week. It very much is. And I felt bad last week because we talked about Water Day, World Water Day, which is a very important topic. But it meant that you couldn't talk about... My favourite topic, wastewater treatment. Exactly. We did, we did touch on wastewater treatment a little bit. Yes. Was, uh, uh, came up in terms of the, the 10 points that people should... Um, look you at can't off. Yes. You can't off with water neutrality, but we didn't get the full glory of wastewater treatment. The full experience <laughs> of wastewater treatment. And I know how much it is your favourite subject, so I thought, you know what, I'll surprise him. I won't give him a week off. I'll give, put him another week back in the hot seat and we'll talk about wastewater treatment just for you. So I know you'd appreciate it. I do. Thank you. Exactly. But anyway, how's your week been so far? It's been good. Um, we've um, done some training with some various colleagues yesterday and we've uh, implemented some um, new processes which will be really good going forward. So striving for doing better things that we are currently doing, but better for the future. So nice. that was good yesterday. Um, very good to actually see all the team back in the office. It's kind of scary to think that um, since um, the, the dreaded uh, pandemic, it's like when you, we used to have a full office, everyone used to come in every single day, and mm. we've only got like 50% of the team in the office these days. I know, but it's nice and blessed sometimes, isn't it? When they're not in. <laughs> it's just nice and quiet. I mean, sorry, I didn't realise the camera was on. Um, but yeah, I, I think with most companies now, they are either fully in back in the office, because I know a lot of companies have policies where they've got to be in a minimum of two, three, maybe four days a week. But um, especially for us, we're fortunate that that's very flexible and we can yeah. choose where we want to be. Yes, it was, it was nice to have the, uh, the full team, right? and it's, of course, you and up in Scotland mm -hmm. um, down with us, so we could actually have a full engaging meeting. But yeah, he joined us on team, so he was present, but just not in person. Well, I did walk past the room, I think, when I went to the gym here at lunch, um, and I saw him on the screen, mm. and I was like... Man. In full glory. Well, that's the issue. <laughs> <clears throat> not an issue. It's what, 75, 18 inch TV? Yeah. And when you've just got one person on this single TV where it's just literally like that as a frame above it. I was like, bloody hell. You know, like Zordon in Power Rangers, it's like, just that massive head. Yeah. That's what it looked like. It's funny as. You shouldn't say that. That's <clears> the new meme. <laughs> yeah. Zordon come to our meeting. But anyway, less digression from us. <clears throat> so the main topic for day for today, I think we've talked about it in previous ones, especially last year. But it's a question that we get a lot all the time and I thought it'd be great to answer it. Here and now, and that is, how does a sewage treatment plant work? Okay, yeah, so it's good to recap this. We do talk about um, wastewater treatments um, mm -hmm. and the benefits quite a bit on this channel, um, but I think to actually highlight this and kind of summarize it all in one uh, would be very, very beneficial for everyone. So let's try and do that now. Um, so to really understand, um, of course, how a treatment plant works is to really understand course what we're trying to achieve in the first place um so with a biological system we're really there to um improve the biological process the breakdown of the foul water entering the tank now that's the, if that's the aim and goal we then need to think about how we can potentially achieve that mm -hmm. and with the various different types of sewage treatment plants in the market there are various manufacturers and we have various different ways of breaking down foul water by improving the um the environment for the uh, bacteria within the tank. Now, the bacteria are introduced into our tank through the black water from um, the property. Um, so this is like from the toilet systems. And those little bacteria, these little microorganisms will break down newly introduced um, water into the tank. So how can we improve the environment of those little bacteria so they can do their job really efficiently um, so we get such a good quality of water discharged from the system and therefore protecting the environment. Now, there are many different, as I say, different types of tank on the market, and they all have different ways of doing this. Um, there's generally, um, I'll, I'll start, of course, with um, how a tank is kind of configured. Most um, tanks, uh, certainly treatment plants, will have a dividing wall in them, which is basically to split the chamber up. And through splitting the chambers, of course, we're then potentially retaining majority of the solids within our tank. So that's pretty much um, step one. Um, we then need to think about how we move water between chambers. So this could be like using an electrical pump in the tank or certainly with a grass system, we use something called an air lifter where we're using air to lift water between chambers. 
We then need to um, think about potentially um, like media, different uh, types of treatment plant will use media, which is basically a, a plastic material, which um, increases surface area for the growth of bacteria on that plastic. So we are basically getting more space in the tank, more bacteria mm -hmm. so they can do their job more effectively. We then have potentially filters within the tank. So filters are there to generally separate waste um, and to potentially um, start like filtering out some of the impurities. Um, and then finally, we have aeration, which is the most important and key process really for any wastewater treatment system. It's certainly how the grass system is really very effective in terms of yeah, improving the quality of water in terms of the inflow versus the outflow in a wastewater treatment system. Um, and the aeration is basically incorporated through, um, again, various different ways. This could be pumps, this could be diffusers, it could be rotational discs. Basically, we want to get more oxygen into the water the oxygen enhances the environment for the living bacteria. And the more effective they are in terms of breaking down the cup of water, water, of course, the better the water will have. Um, so that's potentially the, the, how a sewage treatment plant is basically looks like from the outset. And of course, there are many different ways to improve the living environment and to split the waste up and retain the waste within the tank. The whole idea, of course, of how a sewage treatment plant works is to try and get as good a quality of treatment in the plants as we can. Um, we really talk about um, the oxygen, I suppose, in a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. um, with our systems, of course, um, the bacteria need the food, the water from the incoming um, black water and grey water to the property. We're providing the oxygen. That's how they will do their job more efficiently. And really, again, just a really uh, cow, uh, recap for people. Um, the foul water process is generally achieved <laughs> through um yeah the process of really breaking that, that down there are lots of different um, or, um, or compounds that come into our tank through foul water these are generally carbon based and nitrogen based but there are of course other elements from the periodic table within that and those bacteria do a very good job at breaking them down potentially absorbing some of the comp um, components and that's why we can see reduced levels it's always called, referred to the treatment efficiency um, on certainly in the certification process. And when you're looking at how effective a wastewater treatment system is, we generally look at the treatment efficiency. So we have our inflow. We then take into consideration that treatment efficiency statistic. That will give us a reducing coefficient. And of course, we then have the present uh, molecules in the effluent. So in terms of looking from the outset of how effective the different types of sewage treatment plants are, if we look at the, um, the treatment efficiency for the parameters that's generally how we'll uh, see how good the treatment plant is. Perfect. And also, depending on kind of what type of system it is, what technology uses also dictates basically how it works. And with our systems, we've talked about the introduction of compressed air with our diffusers, but that's very much because our systems are designed to be an SBR mm -hmm. system, a sequence batch reactor. But it also does depend on the type of system someone may have and type of system manufacturer produces that dictates how it works. Yes, exactly. So I've mentioned the dividing wall, like media, filters, pumps, yeah. aeration, all these different components are into their own in different types of manufacturers. Trim plants, graph only take um, essentially two of these into consideration, which is the dividing wall yep. um, and the aeration process. Certainly in our smaller domestic plants, other manufacturers will use different technologies within that tank to optimise really the treatment performance and get the quality of effluence they need in the effluent. Perfect. I believe that, that answers that one. Thank you, David. Gone into a lot of detail about how a sewage stream plant actually works and the results that it delivers. Now it's time for everyone's favourite topic. Oh, my favourite section anyway. It's all, it's all doom and gloom with this topic. I mean, it, it, David, it, 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 don't it's start. <laughs> it's like with the UK it's sort of set in the trend calendar, like. This is my favourite topic. We're going to talk about the tragedy that's in the news. That's most well, there's nothing good about sewage in the news. <laughs> We're spoiling it a bit. But uh, yes, we've got a couple of news stories all about sewage treatment in the UK and sewage in general. Um, but as you can imagine, it's not the most... I was going to say glorious, but it's not the most glorified subject, I guess. It's, it's not a good way of putting it. Yeah, we're talking about sewage. So... It, we, would have it be a hard, lot of hard work in order to make this glamorous? I, I I want to people to understand that, and it's very tough for people that plan these sessions. No one, ever, any of 
no one ever offers to help. <laughs> but anyway, so our first news story was picked up in the Times. They're talking about how the raw sewage dumped in English waterways is up to 800 times a day. Raw sewage is being dumped dumped into UK's watercourses and as per uh, the top of or that graph on your screen there um, that's over 300,000 um, sewage spills in England in 2022 which is by god is it a lot um, however good news is if there is a silver line to every cloud that it is indeed down 34% as from 2021 with the main reason being um, less storm flows last year. Because of the drought, we received less rainfall last year. The majority of sewage spills come from um, basically storm water, or large storm events, and that go, obviously, the water flowing into combined storm and sewage networks mm -hmm. to the point where, because of so much water coming in, it basically overflows it, and that's what causes the spills. Um, but due to... Um, less storm events last year, less rainfall. It meant there was less surges of rainwater going into these combined stormwater and sewage networks. That then meant there was less spills. Um, so yeah, not all doom and gloom. We're down thirty four percent. It's on the downwards trend. If they keep in that back, uh, sorry, um, direction by twenty thirty, we'll be in a very good place. Yes. However, people are arguing that. The issue with some of the overflows or the lack of overflows and spillages, spillages is down to the weather we had last year. Yeah, not in terms of improvements we've yes. actively made. It's so this is the issue and the debate, and, and this is why there's so many kind of groups now fighting and raising awareness for this is because it's happening like 800 times a day. It's incredible. Like that's how many a minute? How many minutes are in a day? <laughs> Um, minutes. Oh my goodness. Um, sixty times twelve. Go. Sixty times twelve. It's just twelve times sixty, then, isn't it? Surely. I know it's sixty times twenty-four, isn't it? But anyway, we, we... go, I, David. I, I, I haven't done maths for. <coughs> I, I've actually got a maths degree, so I can't really well, say that. There's no get out. Six t <laughs> sixty times twelve, seven hundred twenty times that by two. To so get twenty-four 14, hours. Yeah, fourteen six, uh, fourteen fourteen hundred. Yeah, one thousand four hundred forty minutes yeah. in a day. We're saying. Okay. We're going to embarrass ourselves as yeah, this is wrong. So we're looking at about what? One every two minutes spill. Around about that. Yeah. I don't actually know what the volume is for that either. Yeah, true. Um, but there's a large amount. Like one every, once every two minutes there's spill, a sewage spill in a UK waterway. Yeah. I mean, arguably most of those waterways are going to be protected in as well. So. Yeah, and this scary numbers. <clears throat> yeah, and this is the issue. <clears throat> and I think this, um, as you can see on the screen now, this little illustration shows it. Uh, this is what's causing these overflows in the fact that all these combined stormwater and sewage waterways, when the stormwater comes in, they the overflow pipe that goes to rivers is actually combined sewage and stormwater, which means that all this waste. Um, is going into UK's waterways about being treated. Scary to think. Mm -hmm. It's a very cool graph. That's a very nice one. Um, so yeah, eight hundred times a day. Incredible. Well, you could, well, the image is very um, subjective. In terms of, it is very subjective, but, a, but it, it makes it easy to understand. It does, but um, yeah, it, it's kind of like the built suburban areas where there is excessive outflow from on a daily basis of these foul water. Mm -hmm. And then we do, when we do get the surge with the storm water and we, we're showing those pipelines. Yeah. The actual impact is catastrophic, really. Um, if we are thinking of, oh, it is an urban built up environment. Yeah. The overall um, discharge can have a greater impact on the environment versus potentially one private whitewater well, treatment owner. Um, yeah. Out in the sticks where they've only got a, a, a tiny amount of such. I mean, the impact is still as, um, doesn't demean um, the actual. The event happening as much but no no but you could also argue in the fact that if they do have a sewage stream plant because they're not being able to connect to the main sewer network is they are very much keeping their pipeline separate yes indeed. in the fact that they're retaining their sewage and 
uh, sludge into one pipeline and into one tank, whereas their storm is either probably going into a soakaway. Yeah. So they are disconnecting their pipe yes. work to keep yeah. it two separate. Yeah. So good on you guys. Um, and then the next story, would you believe it, is about sewage dumping. Um, but in a recent report, they found that ending sewage dumping could cause higher water bills. And obviously, in the time of, this was shared on the BBC in a new report, but obviously with the time of energy crisis and uh, the cost of living crisis, raising water bills is not going to be, um, I mean, it's not what people need right now, but stopping the dumping of sewage into rivers and the sea will require huge infrastructure spending which will probably push up water bills according to a new House of Lords report, obviously because public money is what funds Thames Water, Southern Water. I say public money, it, you obviously you pay your water bills, but in order for them to put the infrastructure in place in order to deal with the dumping into rivers and seas, it means a lot of cost, and who will that cost burden onto? Their customers, who are each and every one of us. No. Um, because it's not going to be portrayed well. No, and I think that's always going to be the case. I, I think it's more we need to be making sure we're raising awareness for the potential sewage dumping that could be occurring because it's happening a lot. Um, it's certainly something for homeowners to look out for. Yeah. I will say this, of course, here in, certainly in England, um, we're very much um, subject to actually paying for our main water already, and there are other uh, countries within the UK, of course, that aren't subject to paying for mains water. Yes. Um, so, full, and I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, that's just the way things are. With the cost of living at um, this moment in time, everything seems to be ever increasing, and it's very difficult to actually see where um, what all this additional money is going. Um, the, the government have been kind enough to, of course, supplement electricity bills and all that sort of stuff for the time being, but of course that's just racking up loads of debt. Um, and really at the end of the day, if someone, if my water bill is nothing compared to my um, my, my, my energy and gas, electricity and gas bill, <laughs> but if it's just like an additional five pounds per household every, every quarter, and then it just alleviates all this potential polluting um, of and and it's a great investment for the future. I just I just can't see why. I mean, people are, mm. are very much in their right to earn their money and then spend what their money on what they want. But if everyone pays a pound, that is a significant amount of money. Very true. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it's the world we're all living in. Yeah. Um, and a small contribution is like. As we were saying last week on the last uh, on the war today, if everyone just does a little bit, the actual overall impact is massive versus a select few people doing a lot. So yeah, you had a you had a very good slogan. Was it so one person can do a little, but a lot of us can do a lot? So nice. yeah, we'll tidy it up anyway. But um, as we mentioned, and you make a very good point that we are all sharing and living in this one world, so we may as well look after it. Otherwise, it's not going to be around for very much longer and we can need to stop with the sewage dumping and ruin the UK's waterways because the cost and the cost financially and the cost to the environment that it has is incredibly great. So, yeah, that's it for In the News. Um, we'll try. I say this every week. I'll give you a bit more support next week, Callum. If you, if you're looking I will try to find good news stories or we just find news stories that got nothing to do with, with sewage <laughs> and water and rain and storms and i'll just find some uplifting let's stories just, let's just like say that generally the news is either like 99 percent of the time bad news and people like bad news <laughs> bad news sales because <laughs> i think tony robbins always shares the example it's like bad news sales it's you know if you're walking down the street and you went past a newspaper stand it's not video um and it said, um, weather forecast, bright spells, sunny all day. You'd be like, oh, that's nice, and carry on. But then if you walk past the newsstand and it says, warning, big storm ahead, read all about it, you're like, oh, I'm inclined to read that. And you want to know more about the potential the, storm. The than the... Yeah. yeah. 
the incoming doom. The exactly. We all love it. It's ingrained in us, so it's our own fault, I think. Um, so, yeah, I will promise to try and find some better news stories next week. I'll try my best. Okay. I'm not promising anything, but I'll try my best. But anyway. You watch Country Park. That's got, good, got, uh, that's got some good topics on there in terms of all the, uh, the nutrients and phosphate reduction stuff. I'm not joking. <laughs> Country Park <laughs> Sunday morning is like... Usually, I put t- turn the television on. The first thing I think of, oh, it just sounds like I'm working. But, that, <laughs> is, but uh, they actually put some good stuff together in terms of uh, there are active groups in terms of these protected areas. Oh, yeah. Actually, putting quite a lot of research into um, yeah, looking to adjust reduce phosphate and nitrate levels, which have been discharged from water off farm and that stuff. It, 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 it actually winds me up, but I'm more so pleased at the same time that there is a, there is people working on it in the background. There are things. That's brilliant. It, yeah, the fact that you wake up and think, "Oh God, it's like working." It's like the same with me. Put your match of the day on a Sunday. It's like, "Oh, it's like football manager all over again." <laughs> but anyway, that was it. But <laughs> sorry, you can't be with that. It's like I'm working again. <laughs> but anyway, I'll try and stop laughing. Keep it composed. That was it for in the news section. Um, I said. I promise to make it more uplifting next week. But now it's time to answer any and all questions that have come in during today's live stream. Um, so we'll get the first few on the screen. So the first one that's come in is how can a septic tank be cleaned? Um, with septic tanks, it's generally quite a specialist operation to get them cleaned. And it's quite important they are cleaned um, because over spilling um, full tanks, of course, can impact the environment. And septic tanks will traditionally now discharge into uh, the ground. So having a compromised system is going to um, yeah, potentially um, block up and damage the drainage solution they're offering. So it's very good that it is cleaned, maintained, and the longevity of the system will then, of course, increase. Um, to get a, a tank cleaned, you'll generally need to um, involve a desubbing company. So it's a specialist uh, vehicle, um, generally lorries of various different sizes. They'll come in and they'll empty um, the tank of all the, the water in the tank and certainly the sludge. It's then generally advisable to get that tank refilled with, um, with mains water, um, depending on where the tank is installed. If the area is subject to high groundwater, and then, yeah, we want to have some water in that tank to tr- tr- give it some stability so we're not going to have anything, um, at external pressures on the tank. So a specialist company will come in and empty the tank for them. And generally, um, you should refill the tank with mains water to improve, um, yeah, the pressures and stuff of where it is. So you're not going to damage your tank. And by doing so, of course, we're protecting the environment and increasing the longevity of the solution. Perfect. That is that. And then the next question that we've had come in, will a septic tank work without power? I think okay. this is a misconception between septic tanks and I potentially think, treatment plants. I think you're correct. I, it's first important to clarify here um, what um, is meant by the term septic tank. It's quite loosely used in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so firstly, a septic tank is a non-electrical system, um, which basically works by having... A, split chambers within the tank to separate the incoming waste from the um, outgoing waste. Um, and basically, the treatments through a septic tank is those dividing walls, and then we've got liquid waste going out through a drainage field where we've got some additional uh, treatment going on as it percolates through the ground. So septic tanks generally are non-electrical systems. Um, when we talk about potentially using electricity, that's when we start talking about wastewater treatments, package treatment plants, where we're actually incorporating a biological process into the tank to improve the environment to optimize the breakdown of that foul water before it's discharged into the environment. So septic tanks, no, wastewater treatments and systems, yes. Perfect. <clears throat> then that answer and the next question we've had come in today. What could cause blockages in a tank? Lots of different things. Um, I think the first um, thing which gen- jumps to mind is basically the entry of non-biological um, items, products entering the tank. So uh, people need to be aware, of course, um, the do's and don'ts of what you can flush down the toilets. Um, things like, of course, plastics, metals, rubbers, wipes, cigarette butts, whatever it may be. Some people will just throw anything down the toilet and flush it down the loo. 
and it's going to go out to um, the foul water um, tank, whether that be one local to the site or it could be a minister treatment works later on down the pipeline. Those things over time will not break down in the tank or in the foul water network, and they will generally um, block it up so you can get things like fatbergs and that sort of stuff ongoing, really nasty stuff. Um, so the idea, of course, is to keep those non-bargeable things away from our tank to keep the pipelines clear. Um, then, of course, need to consider keeping the tank mm -hmm. empty. Um, so a tank which um, becomes too full will, of course, then block the incoming pipelines and potentially the outgoing pipelines as well. Um, so keeping the tank maintained the services, keeping it re readily, um, regularly emptied, also something to take into consideration. Um, and then something which is um, also considered, kind of away from the actual tank itself, is if you are going to be discharging um, from a wastewater treatment system into the environment, whether it go to a water course or whether it be going into the ground, if the water course is potentially going to flood, of course, you can no longer discharge from your tank. So that's going to back the system up. And if you're going into the ground and you've got like seasonal high ground water, for example, again, the water can't percolate into the ground. It's going to just cause the system back up. So it's quite important when installing a wastewater chip system to, excuse me, to do some um, research works up front and really find out um, what the soil is like, ensure that the solution you're incorporating is going to work, not only for the summer, spring and autumn months, but also the winter months as well, where you're potentially going to get higher uh, levels of groundwater, potentially more um, rain being pulled through um, and yeah, compromising the overall solution. Perfect. That answers that one. I believe that's all the questions that have come in today. We've got a f wave of the hand and the f I believe it's a thumbs up. Yes, it's a <laughs> crooked thumbs up from the people <clears throat> in the back to basically say, that's it. Thank you for your time today, David. Thank you for having me. It's been absolutely no worries. You can now have a week off. You sure? Well, if you can talk about Stormwatch if you wish. Don't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time today, David. And thank you to all of you that came, um, at, took the time out of your day to come watch us talk about all glorious things about wastewater, sewage dumping, and then answering your questions as well. So next week, as I mentioned, will be Stormwater School. So come back for that then. Um, so have a wonderful rest of the week. Have a great weekend, whatever you're doing, and we'll see you on the next one.